and welcome back. Yes, now today we're just looking at um, the Pico, but it, this could be uh, an Arduino Nano or even a Micro or Mini or something like that because I'm experimenting a little bit with the sounds that we can get out of such a, an embedded microcontroller. And uh, as you can see, not a flashing LED in sight. Oh, spoke too soon. Oh, well, let's just carry on with this one for now. Okay, now let's just uh, remove this. Actually, this has a serious point of being here. Uh, we'll talk about that in, um, well, towards the end of the video. What I've been looking at is uh, continuing my fridge alarm a little bit, as well as my bin lid alarm. But one of the things I wanted, of course, was to emulate and replicate, in fact, the original fridge alarm from those, those videos long, long, long ago, four years plus ago that um, I actually took off that large fridge because it was down in the utility room. We thought, oh, I'd be all right here. But your experiences have taught me that um, being far away is in fact a bigger problem than being in the kitchen because in the kitchen you're likely to notice if the door is open for any length of time, even if it's an hour or so, you'd still notice. But back down there in the utility room, we might not notice for a whole day or more, in which case everything would be spoiled, as at least one of you has said happened uh, to you. So I thought, mm, OK, I'm going to reinstate that alarm then. I've still got the electronics, but it's mains powered, well, wall wart powered, and uh, it makes a nice noise when you open the door and when you shut it again. And it's nano driven. So I thought, well, I could use a nano again, of course, on here, or at least the AT Mega 328P. But I thought, well, I've got a couple of Picos. What sort of noise can they make? Surely it must be pretty much the same, must not it? Well, let's see what we can make on here using a bit of MicroPython. I thought we'll just we'll just translate, you know, one line to the other, and it's pretty easy. To be quite honest, half the time I just guessed what the code would be, and it it pretty much worked. Sometimes I even started to write almost pseudo C plus plus code, and it still said, "Yeah, that's okay. We'll keep that." Amazing. Right. Okay. Let's fire up the code window then. Um, I'm going to go back to actually to the monitor so you see exactly what I see. I want to do a shout out for JLC PCB. No, stop, stop, don't go away. Look what they're doing. $2 for aluminium circuit boards. This is absolutely incredible. If you've ever wanted to try an aluminium PCB, now's the time to do it. Now remember, aluminium PCB is a single sided normally with the aluminium on the bottom. Then you have a dielectric layer that uh, transfers the heat up to the top copper layer. Now aluminium is very, very strong and it will suck the heat away out of your components without the need for extra heat sinks, for example. Go and have a look at their website and check them out. And there's more. JLC PCB now allow you to create your own parts library because there's nothing more disappointing than creating a PCB and then finding you can't get the parts or there's a big long delay. Now you can create your own custom parts library to ensure you get the components you need and of course the associated footprints so you know they're going to fit on the PCB itself. To get to this page that describes everything you ever need to know about creating your parts library simply go to their home page and then click on the link at the top. Very, very simple and a really, really useful feature. Go and check out JLC PCB now. OK, here we are then with Thony open. Um, we went through how to get uh, Thony up and running and there's, there's resources out there. And uh, this is a, a brand new Pico that we have here. And the minute you plug it in, the first thing it says is, oh, you've got to download MicroPython that, which I've done, right? So it's a, it's a blank Pico, MicroPython interpreter running on it. Um, but no code. As you can see, it's, it's a blank screen up there, isn't it? So let's start uh, whizzing through this. Now, I'm not going to let you watch me painfully type these lines of code on a keyboard that is cramped down here now because my video camera's in the way. Um, what I'm going to do is edit the video so the code will just appear as if by magic, OK? So let's, uh, let's just get the first few lines of code sorted out and we'll talk them through. So first two lines, these are a bit like an Arduino speak because that's where we're sort of coming from, isn't it, in this video. Um, these are like um, import libraries, OK? So what we're saying is from the machine definition, we're importing the pin definitions and PWM because we're going to use pulse, pulse width modulation to create the sounds. Pulse width modulation in this sense is a square wave, right, of different frequency and of different mark space ratio. Now. We'll come on to that. I'll show you the oscilloscope later on when we've sort of completed this bit of code to show you what difference that can make. A warning, though, a square wave is not a very nice sound, considering that most sound is, you know, sort of sine wave driven. But, uh, yeah, as all the guitarists out there and martial amplifiers and all that, you know that a little bit of distortion can actually sound quite nice. 
Unfortunately, not in this case, but we'll come on to that as we go through. So we're importing these PIN and PWM definitions, and from time we're importing sleep, so we can not go to sleep. No, it's delay, the equivalent of delay, and sleep milliseconds. Once again, delay milliseconds. We're used in the Arduino world more to have the delay in milliseconds, but here you can have it in seconds as well. Just, just there to confuse us, I think, really. Oh, yeah, I said time. I meant new time. doesn't matter. If you're used to writing in Python time, Thony, in this sense, will automatically change this to U time, even if you've typed in time there. OK, so it all just works as you might expect. OK, next bit of code then. Right, we're defining a buzzer. Now, the first thing you Arduinoites are going to say is, hang on a minute, where's the definition of what type that buzzer is? Is it an integer? Or is it a string, an object? or what? MicroPython doesn't care. It works out as it goes along. In fact, you can change from one to the other. It's all a bit loosely typed. Probably that's the biggest change, I think, from MicroPython to you know a strongly typed language like C or C++. Um, yeah, it's all a bit woolly, but it's good for beginners and it's easy to understand. Let's, let's just go with the flow, shall we? Now, this next bit of code um, defines a function. We put def at the beginning. This is just like our function, you know, void or int or whatever it is at the front. The name of the function we're doing, and here, in this case it's buzz, and uh, I'll put a single parameter in there called frequency. Once again, loosely typed. MicroPython says, OK, you've, you've called this frequency. We'll see what it is at runtime as it comes in, and I'll do the biz. Hmm, OK. All a bit loose, isn't it? So what we're saying is, this this object here, this thing that we've created as a PWM pin 15, on pin 15, we're saying, right, we're setting the frequency. That's obviously uh, a method we can call, or a function within that buzzer. Okay, We're setting the frequency from the input. And then we're saying the duty cycle. Interesting this. This, this is getting a little bit more uh, specific now. It's, it's an uns, unsigned integer of 16 bits. And that value controls the mark space ratio of your square wave input. And it really controls the volume to a, a lesser or greater extent. It's, it's not very uh, fine-tuned, not very granular, but it, it's better than nothing. We then sleep for 30 milliseconds, so that's how long the tone runs for. And then we're saying now the mark space ratio or volume is set down to zero. Right, so basically it turns the tone off and we have another little delay there just so we have a tiny gap after the tone. All right, it's, it's what I did before and it sort of sounds a little better when we have this little chirpy thing opening the door. I'm going to switch to the code window now rather than my monitor now that you've seen the whole thing. When we run this, we have to click on this button up here, uh, which is a bit awkward. You can also press F5, right? So you can have stuff on your workbench and just keep hitting F5. Don't keep hitting it too much, though. Otherwise, this, this thing complains. It says, hang on, I've got so much stored up here, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Um, this is to save it. This is to open it. And quite often, you have to stop the back end by clicking that button there and then hitting F5 again, or this one here. OK, that's pretty easy. But what we're first going to do, let's say save this, right? So we can, And it will ask us questions, so pay attention. Right, we're going to say, right, save. Now, it's unfortunate that it's come over there. There it is. Right, so it's again, where to save? Do you want to save it on this computer, the PC or Mac or what, Linux or whatever it is you're running in? Or do you want to actually save it on the Raspberry Pi? Now, you can save it down on the Pi Pico. Um, there's no real advantage there unless you're going to call this program main.py. If you call it main.py, it will run immediately the Pico's powered up. But we're not ready for that yet. We're going to you know, make some amendments to this. So we're going, no, no, this computer is fine. And then it says, OK, where do you want to save it? Well, I'm putting all my stuff in this folder here called Python or my main data drive. So let's uh, let's call this. Uh, let's call it first beep. And you can see down the bottom here, it already knows that it's a Python file, so we just hit save. Hooray! Great. Our first bit of code's done. We can't run it yet because, um, well, there's nothing to say. Go and do something. We've, we've imported some libraries here. We've defined an object type thing here. We've defined a function here to actually do the beep. But where's the command that says, now go and run that beep code? OK, now's the time to switch to the code window I've got, and it will zoom in on this a bit more, and uh, we'll continue. OK, right, let's uh, let's give it the command then. 
to actually run that buzz function. So all we have to do is type in buzz and uh, well, what frequency do we want, want to sound out? Well, the little beeper that uh, I've got attached is not very efficient. So let's have one kilohertz, which is 1000 hertz, of course, um, and run that. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you, I've already seen in this function here, that um, you notice there's a semicolon at the end, because that's the C++ autopilot in me, and it doesn't complain. Thank goodness, because they're scattered all around here. And I'm always tempted, I think, that's not finished. I've, I've got to put a semicolon in there. Well, no, you haven't. It's MicroPython, so we just leave it like that. Now, what that is going to do is sound this frequency uh, of a 1,000 um, for 30 milliseconds, which is very, very short, because we want to make a little bit of a door opening sound. I want several sounds, but for one sound, that's not enough. So let's increase that to a 1,000 milliseconds okay and then um, it will turn the sound off now to run it as i say we need to either click that green button up there or press f5 are you going to hear it well this is the thing let me bring in the desktop and this is a little passive beeper um, i've actually marked the the positive side okay so ideally you want to connect that to the the output of your Arduino or Pico or whatever, and the other side is ground. It will work the other way around, but not as efficiently. Now, I said this is a passive beeper, which means there's no electronics in here. In fact, all there is in here is a little piezoelectric sounder. What's that? What? You don't know what that is. Um, okay, let me show you, <laughs> I'm not being rude, a naked one. Okay, so this is a piezoelectric sounder. It's passive, which means that there's one disc followed by another disc. Um, sort of bound loosely together and when it vibrates it makes the sound. Unfortunately if you were to just connect those two wires onto those solder points there now uh, you'd, you'd almost definitely hear nothing at all. This has to be secured, stuck down basically with a blob of glue or something as much as you can onto a flat surface like that. Luckily this one has actually got a built-in little sounding board. You see this little shell on the back so that it will make a noise. Um, but normally you can just buy these discs without anything, although I've got a whole collection of them. I've shown them to you before. But they're quiet, even quieter than this thing here. So let's see if we can actually hear anything when we run that program. Now, did you hear that beeper? Let me put it really close to the microphone and you'll probably pick that up, no trouble at all. Ready? Okay, now two things. One, it's a thousand hertz, one kilohertz. So this thing is is probably about as sensitive as it's going to get at that sort of frequency, somewhere between the thousand and two and a half thousand. You start doing it lower than that, it becomes really quiet. Um, but anyway, at least it made a beep, didn't it, for one second, as we said down there. Yeah. Now, if that's all you wanted, if you just wanted a beep as a sort of a warning. A beep or a confirmation beep perhaps when you're pressing stuff on a keypad you probably don't want to use a passive one like this you want to use like the one down here that I've actually marked up as being active um, now I've marked it up as active because they're very difficult to tell apart you know especially when you're in a rush and you've got stuff in your little tool bag there um, they look pretty similar from underneath yeah not a lot of different now I've marked these up let's see that blue splodge on the side there um, just for me, just to tell me that, that is a passive one. Um, but I've also put active on this one, because I think I might do that in the future, just for this. I did it just for this demo, actually. But um, what's the difference? Well, active means that uh, you put 5 volts, well, from 3 volts onto that pin there and ground the other side, and that will make a sound all by itself. You don't need to have any square wave to drive it. It runs on DC. And it's reasonably loud, and, of course, you know, you make it, um, on off on off sound intermittent and it will get your attention uh, pretty good but we want more than that well for this anyway for my fridge alarm I want more so I do definitely want this to make a bit of a tune so in order to do that how are we going to change that code now you can see the very last line there says buzz 1000 now you could of course put another line under it that says buzz 2000 it'll have two tones then but you can see that's going to get a little bit laborious if you want to actually run a little tune as I do when you open the door. My target for this is when you open the door, it goes brrrr. And when you shut the door, it's the reverse of that, it goes brrrr. And it's funny how quickly, when that is on the fridge door, 
you you subconsciously listen for it so as you as you flick the door shut and turn around and make a cup of tea or whatever your ear is still listening to that and when it doesn't happen something wakes you up and you go hang on what happened there and you realize the door of the fridge is not shut um, you don't want it too long and you don't want it too loud as it becomes annoying but just enough uh, to let you know the door shut and the reason why i make the sound when the door opens that's confirmation that the whole thing is actually working i mean otherwise you know the battery could be flat or something just just wrong basically so by opening the door you get the sound you know it's working the downside with all that of course is that if there's a sound every time the fridge door opens brrr, uh, benny my cat god rest his soul um, used to hear that as does Dougal, our yorkshire terrier now uh, they used to hear that and go whoa it's treat time and they come running out uh, waiting for a little treat or something and how can you refuse them so yeah uh, and if you haven't got pets or anything you might have kids and they will also learn that the fridge door has been open so yeah okay let's change this code now then to make it call that that buzz definition this one here with a whole set of tones uh, not necessarily a, a note a recognizable tune in this sense but tones nonetheless what do we have to do right the first thing i've just added here is this um variable um, undefined variable you know don't know what type of variable it is uh, with this list of tones that we actually want to sound out uh, now of course this is not going to work how do we get these tones in here yes well it's a for next loop and does that look in in python like this so what we've added in here now is this for next loop here so we're saying for a variable which we've called tone but could be fish and chips remember in the range of well it's not now a fixed range of one to ten or fifty to a thousand or anything we're saying however many elements there are in this array called tones that we've defined up here len being the length of the of that array in terms of elements how many elements and then we're going to say buzz and the frequency will be the element within that tone so when this is zero it'll be that one so tones square bracket zero that one will be tones square bracket one yeah because this is going up from zero to however many elements we have and it will just work its way along this list until it runs out of things to play right let's try that and see what it sounds like that was a little bit painful because one of the things we did was to to keep the tone sound for a second now that was a little bit uh, slow so let's now bring this down to a hundred milliseconds rather than a thousand and uh, i'm going to bring it really close now to the microphone let's bring in the desktop oh desktop so here here's the output i'm going to put that right close to the microphone and we'll try it again shall we it should be much quicker now now, if you notice, we're making changes to the code. We're not compiling anything. We're just hitting that F5 or the green button again. It's great for this sort of repetitive, um, well, prototyping, really. Uh, it's called REPL, R-E-P-L. Right, here we go. Right, okay, that's that's okay. It's a little bit long for the purpose of this demo, but I don't think I'll have that many tones in my open door uh, thing um, that's okay for the door open though let's let's assume we did want that many fine uh, what we'd like to do after that though is to do this again but in reverse order how do we do that in a four next loop in micropython dead simple okay so what we're saying now then is we want to we want to do that list backwards so the array has x elements in it but we want to start from the x minus one because remember, if there are 10 elements, we go from 0 to 9. So we don't want to start from 10. We want to start from the length minus 1, comma. We want to then go all the way down and stop when it hits 0. So we put minus 1. As soon as we hit minus 1, we stop. And we want to go down this list backwards. So we type in minus 1 as well. So that's how you go backwards down. And uh, this line here, we can just repeat underneath. Now that should go up and then back down again. 
Tell you what, let's have a little tiny gap in here. Uh, make sure it's not indented because it's not past the four next loop. We're just going to say sleep uh, one. Now remember, sleep is in seconds, not milliseconds. So sleep one second. Okay. So what we're expecting at the moment is the tones that we just heard in the in the array to go up, and then to go backwards. We're reading backwards down this array. Okay. I think I think that'll be okay. Okay. Let's give it a, a whirl. Now we said it's very quiet. Yes. One way you can make it noisier, there's a better way, we'll come on to that in just a second, is to put something like a, a tube or something over it. So if I was to hold that over there, so that, you know, a bit like the old gramophones of the 1930s, as, you know, a horn basically that makes it louder. You listen to the difference when I hit F5, which I'm going to do now. Right, now that was noticeably louder, well, to my ears. OK, and I'm sure the microphone probably picked it up as well. So that's one way of doing it. But we'll talk about another way in just a second. Now, let's um, let's uh, plug all this in to the oscilloscope and just see what the output waveform looks like. And um, yeah, do a couple of other things with the code just to really annoy somebody who opens the fridge door. OK, now we've changed location for this so we can see the oscilloscope and the bench where I've got the um, Pico and all that set up and I thought it'd be interesting just to have a look on the uh, the meter here the frequency that comes out and what you'll see on the scope is the square waveform um, getting squished up as the frequency goes up and then spread out again as the frequency goes down right let me hit f5 and you'll see exactly what I mean and there's a screechy sound at the end that if we can sit through the screechy sound if the doors left open I'd be very surprised Yep. And watch the frequency go up on here. That's one kilohertz, 1.5 kilohertz. And look how close these square waves are being pushed together now. And now it's coming back down again the other side. The frequency is now dropping. Not a pleasant sound because those square waves you saw on the old scope here are not pleasant to our ears basically it's okay for the simple beep and if you get the resonant frequency of that uh, that beeper you know one kilohertz 1.5 kilohertz whatever it's okay it's a it's a cleanish beep but when you're trying all these other frequencies mm, not so good but it'll have to do now on my original fridge alarm door it did sound the opening and closing much more musical than this i'm wondering whether either the nano tone library is is better in some way or the hardware within the chip is different or whether I'm just doing something differently in the code here that I haven't done previously I'll look into it because obviously I don't want this to be an irritating tone you know going forward it's got to sound reasonably pleasant and certainly the the nano based one did sound okay so one thing some of you might have uh, just heard there is that it was so much louder when we did it over there than what we did it here on the desktop originally and the reason for that are those extra components you can just see wrapped around the wires there. Um, there's a resistor and a transistor. So what have I done there to make it louder? So your microcontroller is outputting a square wave, but here on the on the uh, Pico and on any other 3.3 volt microprocessor, um, it's going to output a square wave at 3.3 volts, isn't it? Which is not 5 volts, which is what that beeper really needs. So if we put the beeper in the collector of the transistor like that um, and then well yes I certainly would put some kind of resistor in here something like um, a 1k even or a 10k perhaps we don't want to overdrive this transistor too much not with 3.3 volts going into it I mean it's survived for a bit but mm -hmm. yeah so something like a 10k and that will of course enable the beeper to use the full 5 volts of VCC so on the Pico five volts is available from that pin up there and therein lies the rub well, when i eventually create my fridge alarm it's not going to have a five volt supply is it? it's going to have a battery supply okay 4.2 initially but all the way down to sort of three volts towards the end so whilst this will help in the beginning as the voltage on the vcc line drops on that battery um, it's going to be pretty low as, as low as what it is now on the one we didn't change so the volume will will drop which is one good way of knowing when the battery's getting flat i suppose but mm, 
Yeah. I wonder if we really need some kind of um, buck boost little circuit. Yeah, a boost circuit to bring it up to 5 volts. Well, something to consider, isn't it? Maybe not even in this circuit, but maybe in others. We shall see. Now, the code that you just heard running, okay, with the extra bits on it, um, which you're seeing in front of you right now, I'll put that um, a link to it in my video description. You'll be able to go onto the GitHub and drag that down if you want to play a little bit. And I, if you're interested in the Pico at all, please do play. It's the only way you're going to learn. It's the only way I'm sort of really getting my head around what it can do. And as I say, if you've got the experience in Arduino Uno, ZSP32s, whatever, it's going to be much, much simpler than you might think. Okay, it's more syntactic than anything else. Now, I did mention that um, we'd be coming back to my bin lid alarm just briefly, because if you can see the passive beeper on there, see that blue splodge on the side? That means it's a passive beeper, um, and that will be used to beep when the bin lid is open and when it's closed again. Now, obviously, I'm mindful that it's running on a battery, a bit like the fridge alarm. So I don't want to flatten the battery just because I'm playing stupid sounds on here. So it's going to be a fairly simple beep, but something that will be different when it opens and when it closes. You want to differentiate, okay? Cool, okay. So you can see that somehow a lot of these projects are intertwined, aren't they? I'm running on batteries. I'm having a little sound come out of them. Um, I'm latching things on and off. Yeah, there's, they're all, you know, and whether it's I'm using a Pico or an AT mega 328p makes very little difference at the end of the day as long as you can do what you need to do it's all fine okay that's it from me um, now please do me a favor and go and have a look at my sponsors website because you know they, they obviously want to show you their their features and what they can do and uh, there are now aluminium pcbs up there for two dollars i oh, know i'm gonna have a go at those believe me aluminium Think of the heat that that's going to suck away when you try to solder things on it. I'm fascinated. I've really got to have a try. So go and do that. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any comments on, you know, the sound that we've created using the Pico or anything else, please put them down below. I love hearing from you. The last set of comments you gave me about my dual switch detection. That was absolutely amazing. Yeah, everybody thinks they can do it differently, don't they? Um great stuff it makes that makes it uh, really worthwhile so do all that and remember give me a thumbs up give me a like spread the word and see you in the next video i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos thanks for watching